My guest today is Edward Thompson. Edward, how you doing? Good. Hey, David. Welcome to the United States. Thank you. It's we good to be here. We love diversity. We love foreigners like yourself coming I've... over from Cambridge, England. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You know, uh, as an Englishman, uh, I find Chicago delightful. You've uh, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> you picked up our language so well. I know. I do well with that, don't I? <laughs> and what do you do? Uh, so I'm a product manager for GitHub Actions. So I work at GitHub on um, a new feature that we're rolling out. We announced it um, about a year ago. Okay. It's called GitHub Actions. Uh, and what I, Git I learned about GitHub Actions yesterday in an email. That's when great. You told me that was your title. <laughs> I, I, and that's all I know about it. So <laughs> what GitHub Actions is, about a year ago, um, we announced some tools to allow you to automate actions within your repository. So let me, okay. let me give you an example. Um, a lot of times people, when somebody opens an issue, okay. they might want to maybe try to understand you know, contextually what's going on, maybe a, a apply a label, maybe assign someone to that issue. Okay. Um, and before GitHub Actions, the way that you would do this is you'd build an app. Mm -hmm. um, and it would listen to webhooks. What webhooks are familiar with? Yeah. So that's sort of an this thing happens, something else happens. That's exactly right. Yeah, so GitHub will notify you when, with a webhook, when somebody opens an issue, and then you can process that. It used and to be then... to have a custom app that would call, the webhook would call and do that. Okay, okay. Let's start. Uh, so, the, the, the problem with GitHub apps, though, if you're building your own app, you need to have some compute somewhere where you're, where you're doing work. Oh. Um, so you need to bring a virtual machine to the party. Mm. I don't know, maybe you can make it serverless functional kind of stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to provision that yourself. Mm. And that's what GitHub Actions, you know, a year ago, that's what GitHub Actions really tried to, to solve. And the idea is that we would provide you with the computing resources um, to, to, to do this work. Oh, so I'm still building the app. Yes. I'm just deploying it to GitHub, to, That's your, correct. to your service. That's right, right. Oh. So we'll, we'll, we'll pay that for you. The, and this was, I, I thought, really clever. The problem with it is that um, all of a sudden people looked at that and said, well, what I want to automate is my, my build and my tests. So what they were looking for was for GitHub to be a continuous integration platform for them. Hmm. Okay. Um, the problem with that was that the original you know, iteration, I guess, of GitHub Actions. Uh, it was running inside Docker containers okay. on Linux. Uh, it didn't have a ton of computing power, and and mm. you know, so and that that's fine if you if you're building a Node.js app and it's not very big. It was probably okay for you. Okay. So you could do your build, could run your tests, and GitHub Actions was appropriate. But but for large builds, it would kind of choke on that. That's right, and you know, maybe you're building a an iOS app. Maybe you're building something for Windows. Hmm. So uh, it was really not appropriate for build and test and release workflows. Okay. So what we did, you know, we opened up a beta program. We quickly realized that this is what people wanted. We also quickly realized that we didn't have it for them. Interesting. Yeah. So we, we paused the beta program. We stopped letting people in for a little bit. Uh -huh. And we went back and retooled. Uh, so now instead of running inside Docker containers, we give you a real virtual machine. Mm -hmm. Instead of it just being Linux, we also offer Mac OS and Windows virtual machines that will host for your workflows. So you can still do those repository automation sort of workflows where you, know, you open an issue, somebody opens a, a pull request, and, and you do some processing on it, um, and, and I don't know, maybe label it or assign somebody to it. Um, but you can also now run your builds and your tests oh, as well. Tell me about the process of how do I, uh, you know, I've got, uh, for example, a build integration piece that I've, I've written, okay. how do I get that into GitHub and how do I hook it up, how do I wire it up? Right, so there's there's really two pieces to GitHub Actions. The first is your your workflow. Okay. So if, if I have a, let, just to use the same example, if I have a Node.js app and what I want to do is uh, run my builds, run my tests on that every time, say, somebody opens a pull request or every time I push something into the master branch, okay. um, then I'm going to write some YAML. Um, so all I have to do is, and it's it's reasonably easy to, to get started. You click the actions tab, you click new action, and we'll actually give you some starter workflows that you can you can oh, start so from. Oh, so for something like a continuous integration, you've already got the frameworks in there. You got the the, the hooks in there to do that. That's right. Okay. That's right. You don't have to. I don't have to write my own code to deploy it. No, no. You just write some uh, some YAML, YAML. You know, like and and some configuration it's stuff. It's probably already there. You know, right. what you probably want to do is npm build, npm run test, right. and that sort of thing. Um, and so that's sort of the, 
the really basic, you know, getting started experience. Right. And you can grow up from there a little bit. You know, maybe you want to build a Docker container. Maybe you want to push that Docker container into a package registry. Mm -hmm. um, but then the other side of that is uh, are what we call actions. And that's where GitHub Actions gets its name. Okay. And that allows you to do some, like, reusable, like, really clever stuff. Like, maybe instead of just writing YAML that is... Uh, you know, over and over again, like Docker, Docker login, Docker push. Maybe you want to have an action that does all this for you. Okay. So instead of writing like 10 lines, 20 lines of shell scripts inside YAML, maybe instead you want to write uh, an action that re you can reuse within your different repositories. Hmm. And so that could be like a deploy to a Kubernetes cluster sort of an action. Uh, and that way then you could reuse it. And then you just give it, you know, like some variables, like this is, this is, my yeah pass in parameters to it yeah exactly so the, name, the name of a virtual machine you want to build for example perfect perfect yeah that's that's exactly right um and so uh you can build those in one of two ways you can either have a docker container that has your action in it mm -hmm. and what we'll do is we'll just run that docker container um, or you can uh build a a, a javascript based action um, and and that one i actually prefer because it's uh, it's cross-platform. It's very flexible. We've got a nice toolkit for working with, um, you know, both the the incoming webhook and all that data. You, you know, we've got some nice um, sort of functions to process that, and then functions you can use OctoKit to talk back to uh, GitHub. So I'm not for what is OctoKit? So OctoKit is our like sort of REST and, and GraphQL API. Uh, for Node.js applications. Okay. So it's real easy. You can say, hey, create a new issue, create a new pull request, and, and you mm -hmm. know, in a very nice uh, JavaScript-y way. Okay. So, um, so yeah, uh, I, I think workflows are, you know, probably the way most people want to get started with GitHub Actions, but right. then you can kind of, you know, be very customizable and that sort of thing. Are people using them outside of the, mm -hmm. the build and deploy? Yeah, the they are. Um, and so, those are the, the things that I think are really interesting. I, I think that um, there, there, let me give you a, a, an example. There's one called StaleBot, so it will close stale issues. So it runs nightly, looks and sees what issues haven't been commented on or ha had any activity taken on them, and then it'll just say, hey, this is looking pretty old. Maybe you want to close it. I'm gonna, not going to do anything. I need that in my life. I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's so good. Um, it gets rid of a lot of clutter. I can't, so, I can't admit to myself that I'm never going to get to those I know. things on my oh, list. Oh, God, you should see my inbox. It's terrible. Um, so that that's one example. But then people are also taking it and doing some like really creative stuff with it. Uh, so uh, have you played Untitled Goose Game yet? I'm not a gamer. But so, no, so the, I may become one now after that hearing. There's this system. game on uh, <laughs> Switch, at least, and maybe other okay. platforms. It's called Untitled Goose Game. And the idea is that there's this village of friendly people going about their day, uh -huh. and you're a goose. Okay. You're a mean goose. I'm not and a silly goose. I'm a mean goose. Your, your only goal <laughs> is to anger these townspeople. So you just kind of sneak up behind them and go honk. Or you, you know, I don't know, you move their stuff. And, uh -huh. um, and your goal is to frustrate them. So uh, somebody wrote an action kind of inspired by that. And I, I call it, I, I forget its, its name. I call it Untitled GitHub Game. But the idea is that if you install this uh, action, if you set this action up in your repository, any issue that somebody opens uh -huh. that doesn't have the word honk in it <laughs> will just get deleted. <laughs> So, um, what's the use case for this? <laughs> oh, that's just for fun. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I, I just wonder what customers are clamoring for that feature. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I admit that I don't think there's a lot of customer customer requests for that. But I think it's fun. Uh, you know, it's um, it, it's a good example. But I, I, I think it's nice to see people doing doing fun things with their day-to-day yeah. -day workflow. I do. I, I was thinking that maybe uh, those older issues that haven't been worked on. Maybe it's not. Maybe closing them isn't the answer. Maybe uh, uh, bringing the people's attention. Maybe emailing them out. Uh, to, yeah. To give them to the intern to review. Something Absolutely. Like that, things like that. They, yeah. You know, there's. They, they may. There may be a reason why a good reason to close them, but there may be also that uh, they should be worked on. Somebody should look at them. Yeah, I totally and agree. And that's a nice process to take in. Yeah. You, you've inspired me. I might go write this. I love it. I think that's great. <laughs> Is this? Uh, so this works inside of the GitHub portal. This is yeah. Everything is on inside of there. All inside of GitHub. That's right. And when I, if I'm building, let me. I'm trying to get my head around this. If I'm building um, my own applications, 
then I'm writing them locally, and then I'm deploying them to GitHub somehow so that GitHub knows about them. Is that the idea? Yeah, like that's example, right. If I wrote a, a, my own uh, untitled goose thing, <laughs> how does GitHub know about that? I have to upload it somewhere? Yeah, so it, what we do is we actually run actions from within a repository. So you push oh. that code into a repository, and then you can reference it. Just say, I'm using, you know, uh, mine is E. Thompson slash, let's call it untitled GitHub game. And, you, and, and then that's just sort of. So I'm putting executables and DLLs in the repository? Uh, it's, it's JavaScript, JavaScript or a Docker yeah. container, one or the other, but yeah. Uh, okay, so there has to be a runtime that supports this. That's right. Uh, and that's JavaScript right. happens to be supported natively, but exactly other than so. that, you better put a, a container or something that that's right. has it. Okay, all right, that makes sense. Um, and I can check a, uh, I've never done that before, I can check an entire container into a GitHub repository? You, uh, what, we, what we want is the Docker file and we'll do the Docker build for you. I see, okay. This is new ground for me. <laughs> and is this available right now? You said you so it's in beta it in right beta. now. It's yeah. still in beta. Still in is beta. Is it a private beta or a public beta? It is a largely public beta. Basically, what, if you go sign up, what we aim for is to turn it around so that you're in the next day. Um, okay, how do you it, sign up? Uh, you go to github.com slash features mm -hmm. slash actions, mm -hmm. and all you have to do is just you know click a button, um, and it's it's very straightforward. And yeah, uh, it, it depends on capacity. Sometimes we have to slow it down just a little bit, mm -hmm. but on the whole, you should be in the next day. You slow it down just the, the entrance to it. Yes, that's correct. What about documentation? Do you have any documentation on your page? Uh, we do. We, we've got documentation. So, I mean, you can. It, it's on github.com in our documentation section. Um, and that is something that we are continuing to sort of invest in. That's one of the reasons we're still in beta. Um, you know, we, we want great examples, great documentation. Um, and so we're working on that now. Excellent. What's next for you? Uh, getting ready for GitHub Universe. Uh, I, I, uh, conference? Yeah. Uh, Where is that? It's our annual conference in San Francisco. It takes oh. place November 13th and 14th. Oh. And I am I'm incredibly excited about it. We've got a lot of work to do to get there. We've got a lot of stuff that we want to show off once we're there. A lot of big announcements coming? Uh, there are announcements, yeah. I hope to talk to you right after that, then. That sounds great. Cool. Edward, thank you so much. Thank you. I can't wait to see what technologies you and your friends build with GitHub Actions.